I have two printers in my shop. But when it comes to actual printing, I always choose the Bumble X1 Carbon, which is a shame. The RON is really capable and it has a lot of potential. But ever since I built it, it has a number of issues that made me choose the Bumble X1 Carbon way more often than the Voron. But now that I have the Bumble X1 Carbon, I can absolutely risk-free spend some time on improving the Voron. And it does need some love. So let's just list out the issues and tackle them one by one. It starts, obviously, with the printer needing some cleaning. The old filament sensor here in the back introduced a tight loop, which means lots of my filament cracks pretty quickly. The camera in the back is not the intended camera. It was meant for a PyCam, but I didn't have one when I was building the one originally. This one here is 90 degrees rotated, as you can see in the shot here. The Z end stop and the Z offset drives me nuts. I never get it quite right. And the quality of the print is so-so. You can see the elephant foot and you can see the layer lines. God, that machine is heavy. It weighs something like 35 kilograms and really is not a joy to carry around. Let's start the disassembly by removing the panels one by one. Some of the dirt is coming, obviously, from just dust that settles on top. But a lot is also coming from residue from the ABS filament that I'm printing in the printer. So I need to clean the panels inside and outside to get them to look nice again. Before I assemble everything here in the back, let me quickly explain how the printer currently positions the nozzle over the print bed. When starting the print, it starts with putting the nozzle on the Z end stop here. This gives the printer the exact height of a known position somewhere in the ballpark of where the print bed is. But it's not precisely where the print bed is. That's where the Z offset comes in. It's a configured value that tells the printer how much higher or lower the print bed is from the Z end stop. That offset is taken from the center of the bed. But most beds are not perfectly flat. So the printer uses this inductive probe here to measure the distance on a number of points to create a bed mesh to compensate for the unevenness of the bed using the Z end stop and the inductive probe together. Both have the issue that they are dependent on the temperature of the printer and the nozzle of the printer. So they lead to different results at different temperatures. And that's where TAP comes in. It uses the nozzle itself to measure the distance between the print tool head and the print bed, which really is the most accurate way of doing it. The TAP introduces a new rail for the tool head to slide up and down on. And the first thing I do here is just cleaning down all the transport oil that was put on to prevent rust from building up. Next up, I put a little bit of lithium grease in there just to give the entire rail and carriage proper lubrication so that it can move nicely. Then I put in the heat set inserts, which is really rewarding. The plastic always looks pretty nice with uh, heat sets in them. The rest of the assembly is pretty straightforward. I end up with three parts. The black piece is what goes on the X carriage, the red bit that I'm cleaning here is what will hold the tool head and the carriage that connects both of them that slides onto the rail. Whoops, I almost lost the ball bearing retainer here. That would have been very annoying. Before I can install the tab into the printer, I need to take care of the belts. When I initially was building the Voron, I had trouble getting both belts to the same tension, which indicates an issue with the assembly. And one issue can be that the belts are just of different length. And would you believe it? They are. It's off by one, which I obviously cut away immediately. And uh, now I can sleep a little bit better. That's good. And with that, I start installing the tap. That includes rerouting the belts, which, as always, 
is just a little bit frustrating as there's quite a number of tiny passageways that the belt just doesn't quite want to fit through. Anyway, I managed and I'm installing the carriage, which then will hold the mount, which then will hold the tool head. And here you can see the movement of the entire tap assembly. And that's what makes tap ultimately work. Next up is the assembly of the extruder, the Galileo 2. And what's special about this particular extruder is that it uses a planetary gear to reduce the servo motor down 9 by one which gives us quite some pushing force, which allows us to push a good amount of plastic through the hot end. The rest of the assembly is pretty straightforward, no hiccups here. One thing that is nice about this particular kit is that I got a dedicated PCB that fits this extruder particularly well, and it allows us to have a single umbilical cord that runs from the main board up to the tool head. You can see the spring-loaded mechanism here that pushes the drive gear against the filament to then push it through the hot end. And this is another dedicated separate PCB that just connects into the main PCB and it allows us to have the part cooling fans just click onto, which is much easier to assemble. And the last Bit that I assemble here is the stealth burner, which is the front with the part cooling fans and the hot end itself that will then extrude the plastic. This assembly was a little bit more challenging. A couple of things have to fit, like the Bowden tube that connects the hot end and the extruder. Then come the LEDs and the fans. And lastly, I have to recrimp most of the connectors so that they will fit into the new PCB that I was showing earlier. This allows me to simply attach the stealth burner front end to the PCB of the Galileo extruder that I was assembling in the step just before this one. And here's the completely assembled stealth burner with the LEDs, with the hot end cooler, and up with the part cooling fans and the PCB that connects everything nicely so that I can just simply attach it to the Galileo. And now finally, I can assemble all the things I built before. The only thing I need to add here is the thermostat for the chamber. And then we can release the magnets. These magnets help ultimately increase the rigidity of the entire assembly by simply holding down the tool head when it's not engaged. Before I finally can start back up the printer, let's address the nozzle cleaning. So I have that brass brush here that doesn't really work well for me. What I also have is an X1 carbon and they use this and it seems to be working pretty well for them. I also have a PDFE tube, uh, a Teflon tube. Cutting it to length, it nicely fits an M2 screw. And I think I would like to make something work with it. So let's hop on into 360 and see what we can build. So this is what I came up with. This is the PTFE tube that I was showing earlier. And you can see the M2 screw going through. You can also see the meandering shape here that allows the entire thing to bend when the nozzle hits the PTFE tube. I base this on the original design of the brush that I was showing earlier. So all the other parts that come with it, like the perch bucket, will just fit nicely. So this is really just the original assembly here. I also recreated the two screws that the build plate can index against. However, I replaced the relatively flimsy M2 bolts here with uh, two much beefier M3 bolts. And with that, let's send it to the printer and get it printed. It comes together pretty quickly and is pretty simple to print, really. And here's the result. I already installed the camera and the left side of the plate end stop. And here you can see how nicely the plate indexes against it. And it's finally the moment to 
and move the tool head for the first time. Look at it, it's so nice. And comparing with the old tool head, you can see it's a bit larger, but it also has built-in cable management now, LEDs and much better part cooling. And with that, let's take the printer for a spin finally. The tap is now what is used to measure the distance from the nozzle to the bed. And as you can see here, it works perfect. And here you can see the new nozzle cleaning mechanism that uses the X1 carbon mechanism. And now a complete print of the Voron test cube. I'm very happy with fixing many of the issues that I had with the initial build. The camera in the back is super wide angle and upright this time, which is nice. I fixed the belt tension issue. The filament in the back, as you can see now, is much lower as the previous version and has a better position that uh, introduces less of a bend in the Bowden tube. The new tool head is just awesome. With the tap, better part cooling, and obviously the LEDs are a nice touch as well. The build quality, as you will see in a couple of seconds, is much, much better. And overall, it's much more reliable compared to the initial version. I can just start a print and let it run without me needing to tent it. You can see a cube printed by the current version on the left and an older version on the right. The right one clearly has an elephant foot and the Z layer lines are way more pronounced on this one than on the new version. That is pretty smooth. Well, that's it for this one. I hope you liked it. If you did, leave a like and maybe even a subscribe which really helps the channel and it would mean the world to me. Until next time, bye.